thy great power. Now look at this. And hast reigned. Now you notice right here this past tense, he already reigned. Okay, so this is where your modern, vi your modern versions, your Greek and Hebrew scholars, they all throw a fit and they don't understand this. Why? Because they don't understand the prophetic application, double application, uh, dispensational application. That's their problem. So notice right here it says hast reign, right? So he already reigned. That's what's going on. Okay? But I thought it's future because of verse 15, right? So what's going on over here? So what's going on over here is this, is that when you look at verse 16, what's happening right here is that verse 13 we see right over here, right? During the tribulation. Verse 15, the seventh angel is sounding the seventh trumpet. And when he sounds the seventh trumpet, it could go in this manner. So pay attention. It could be that at verse 15, that this is the end of the tribulation. And then verse 16 and 17, it jumps to the end of the millennium. Or it could be that verse 15, 16, 17 is all the one thing and it jumps to the end of the millennium. Why is that possible? That's why you can't do sequence with Revelation. See that? We already saw this with the seventh seal, right? Like you're going back to the past. Now that we hit the seventh trumpet, it's like we're going back to the past. Uh, we're like jumping ahead. See that? You can't do like, so it's, it's a nice flowing sequence. I mean, you get some kind of bearded freak who has less than 20 pounds and thinks that he's king of the world and talks like, eh, 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 it's all in sequence, chronological order. It's so easy to know. Easy to know, man? Your brain is fried like scrambled eggs. No wonder your doctrines are easy to refute, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, because you think your Bible is like so simplistic. You don't go deep in that word, man. They're not dispensational. All right, you got to realize that in the seventh trumpet, it's like jumping ahead to the millennium time. So... During this timetable now, we see the 1,000-year reign of God. In the 1,000-year reign of God, you notice I said 1,000-year reign of God, correct? That's his millennial reign. I mean, God didn't reign. I mean, look at that verse, hast reign. He did not reign this time. He's taking it back for himself right? But why would it put in a past tense? Because it jumped. But it doesn't make sense that he, sa he says, hast reigned, and verse 18, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged. That doesn't make sense. No, it does make sense. Verse 18 is not referring before the tribulation where God does his wrath against the nations. Because if you, we're going to look at this very briefly, okay? I'm not going to really expound on it, but jump to Revelation 20. Keep your bookmark at Revelation 11. Jump to Revelation 20. Notice that you see verse 4, okay? He's reigning a thousand years. But notice the nations get angry. All right, let's look at verse 4. I saw thrones, they sat upon them. Judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and what? Reigned. See, past tense with Christ a thousand years. So notice, reigned. 1,000 years. Is this picture accurate then so far? Yeah. Is it accurate that the nations are coming after this and God's wrath is poured? Yes, because look at verse 8. So verse 7, Satan's loosed out of his prison. Satan gets bound a 1,000 years during this millennial reign. But he gets loosed and deceives, verse 8, shall go out to deceive the what? Nations. Okay, okay. Look at Revelation 11 and 20. Okay, we're going to go back and forth, back and forth and pay attention. 
Verse 18 of chapter 11, and the nations were angry, right? Look at chapter 20, verse 8. Go out to deceive the nations. See that? Okay, go back to chapter 11, verse 18. Nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. Does God's fiery wrath fall on them? Go back to Revelation chapter 20, verse 9. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and what? Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. See that? His wrath is come. So notice right here, see, when you keep thinking this dumb post-trib mindset, the wrath is only a singular term. The wrath is only referring to hell. No, there are many different wraths, okay? You got to realize that there is a wrath down here, according to the book. You know what? We're going to have to look at several, all of them, okay? That way we can make this sense. Okay, let's go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. People don't read their Bibles, man. That's how you end up like a post-tribber. How you end up like a post-tribber is you don't read your Bible and you don't know that there are different wraths. Okay, first wrath is hell. First wrath is hell. That's why one of them, by the name of too many McDonald's, think that Oh, so then uh, you get right over here at Revelation chapter 14, the wrath, which is referring to the mark of the beast. So in a sense, in this mid-trib rapture, we're still before the wrath of the mark of the beast or when it comes out because it's referring to hell. So this guy don't know what he's talking about with this slavery Baptist church and his name going too many McDonald's. Okay, let's look at the book of John chapter 3 and verse 36. Idiot like him, you know. Oh, I don't like it when you're calling out these patterns. You're so mean. You're so divisive. No, I, I have the right to do that with heretics who like to steal sheep. I do that with heretics who try to pretend, oh, we're not a cult, when they got less than 19 pastors around the whole world, and they keep losing every year. You know, that's a cult, man. That's a cult. You know why? Because they're so indignant about, we're going to follow this one person, what this person's saying. And this person's trying to contain everything together all right John chapter 3 verse 36 he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the what wrath. wrath of God abideth on him so that's hell obviously we know that okay now let's look at the second one we're going to look at the book of Luke look at the book of Luke the tribulation is also known his time of wrath Luke chapter 21, please. Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Now, notice what the Bible says right here in Luke chapter 21. And we'll read verse 22. Now, we read this like a billion times, right? So, uh, verse 21 we know this is referring to the Jews running for their lives, right? We covered that at Revelation chapter 6, right? Okay, so we'll just take that for granted. I'm not going to explain it. So taking for granted, this is the tribulation. Look at verse 22. For these be the what? Days, not just one day, days of vengeance. Verse 23. But one to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and what? wrath upon this people so it's days of wrath see and it's in plural tense so during the tribulation timeline this is also known as wrath okay with days of wrath then you get this one wrath that, that post-tribbers are the only ones looking at, all right? They're like, oh, so Jesus' second advent here is the single day of wrath. This is, so they only look at one. No, this is just one of many. Look at Revelation 6. See, they don't read their Bibles, these guys. So Revelation 6, day singular of wrath. 
So that's his second advent. There's no days of wrath. You don't read your Bible. Luke chapter 21. And not only that, not just one single day, and not just plural days, you got an eternity of days. You got an eternity of hellfire, see? So obviously there are different wraths. Do you think, let's, let's make this common sense. Do you honestly believe God only has one single wrath in his, in his entire eternity? Obviously not. There are many different operations how he performs his wrath. That's just common sense. Okay, now let's look at Revelation 6. Revelation chapter 6. Verse 16. Now this is where, this is where apologizing studios get this dumb interpretation that, so this is referring to the time of the early ADs. I sound like an eloquent intellectual. No, you just look like a moron. Using intellectual garb yeah. to cloak a common sense interpretation, that shows how incredibly stupid you have to be. All right. Said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Look at that. Okay. Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne and they're saying, let the rocks fall on us. It's that time. So that's referring to Jesus' second coming. What is that called? For the great day of his wrath is come. See that? So that's his day of wrath. And you think that's the early A.D. timeline? You nuts, man. You nuts. But they're very smart. Yeah, you just have to take intellectual garb from seminaries. And as long as they cloak it with intellectual wording and eloquent speech, you can brainwash anybody. Take a common sense child, show them a rock, and say, didn't you know we, we were all born from that rock? That child's going to laugh at you like you're stupid. But give it enough time in school where you brainwash them with intellectual garb. So look how this chemistry works with this kind of formula. And look how this spontaneous generation works with this kind of hominid fossil. And through long ages of time when we look at the geological record that, oh, it makes sense. We did come from a rock. Okay, why am I really slamming hard on that? It makes me stinking angry. Because I went through that higher education system. Man, it can brainwash you as long as you take careful care and patience to use intellectual garb and terms and logic. You can convince anybody you come from a rock. But, it, but, you, but even a little child can laugh at you that, oh, yeah, my, my great, great, great ancestor was from a monkey. A laugh at you at the beginning. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 11 again all right so then we know that his wrath came down again at the millennium right so that's his that's the other wrath his other wrath falls down over here at the end of the millennium 